Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. We are on the Riches of His Glory series. Let us pray. My Lord, my God, sweet Holy Spirit, in your name we pray. In your name we move, we breathe, and we have our being in you. In your name we speak and we sing and we create. In your name, Lord, we say thank you, Father. Thank you that we can be first and then we can do. We can be a daughter or a son first, coming to you in prayer, my Father, in love and in trust, surrendering. And then we can go out into the world and tell every creature of this magnificent relationship with the one and true God. Thank you that you wake up our soul. We have a new spirit today in you, my Father. For you shoulder our weaknesses, Lord God, Christ Jesus, and you make us strong. Once we were dead in our trespasses, and today we are alive in you. It is a joy to thank you, Father, for being the wonderful counselor. You counsel us, you lead us down paths of righteousness, down paths of peace and true joy. It is a joy to thank you for being mighty God, the sovereignty of God, the omniscience of God. Thank you that you are everywhere and you see everything that I cannot see, that I cannot hear, but you do, my Father. It is a joy to thank you for being the everlasting Father. For many of us that have a father fracture, a father emptiness, you are everlasting Father. And even though we may have wonderful earthly fathers, but our heavenly Father cannot take the place of any other Father on earth. My God, you are everlasting Father. Jesus changed the world when he said, when he said, Heavenly Father, our Father who art in heaven, holy be thy name. My God, you are the everlasting Father. It is a joy to thank you for being the Prince of Peace, the Prince of Peace that, that gives us this assurance, this inner calm that only comes from you, my Father, only comes from the Son, Jesus Christ. It is a joy to know you and to follow you and to serve you. In the purest of praises, we say, Lord, we love you. Thank you. Thank you once again for dying for us on the cross. Amen. And we are pondering, meditating, learning about the rich blessings in the Lord. And today we are doing a devotional about joy. The joy of the Christian experience is the dominant theme running through the book of Philippians. The word joy and rejoice are used 16 times. So 
It is very logical to think that joy and rejoicing is an important experience for every Christian, as it has been listed in one, cha in one book of the Bible 16 times. Galatians 5.22 reads, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. And so these are Christian character traits. These are the fruit of the Spirit. In other words, by spending time with God, by being with God, by learning from Him, by experiencing God in a daily manner, the Spirit the f will produce the fruit, which is the love and the joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. And so, it's very unlikely that we spend time with the Lord and we go out and abuse or we go out and be violent or do a, a horrible crime. It, it's very unlikely. It's just impossible because when you are truly in Christ, there is a proof, there is an evidence that is it is reflected in our inner person as well as our outer person. And John 16, 24 says, until now you have to ask nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Proverbs 17, 22 says, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. I know that full well, for I suffered from depression almost all my life. The first time I remember being very, very, very incredibly sad with a sadness that was beyond any human understanding. I was 11 years old when my father died, when he was killed brutally. And I remember as far back as 11 years old, being sad and being depressed. And I grieved all my life. And one of the, the, the central themes of depression is that joy and hope is non-existent. And therefore, the Bible can produce peace and joy. God and his Holy Spirit can produce it by the power of his Spirit. Biblical joy is an inner delight in God and his promises. Isaiah 42 1 says, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. That alone is a reason to experience joy. Being chosen by God, being one that his soul delights, I have put my spirit upon him. And once the spirit is upon us, once we seek the Lord and seek the spirit of God in praise, and worship and thanksgiving, it is inevitable that we are going to feel joy and peace. It is an inner delight and a quiet assurance, believing and trusting. That gives us comfort and contentment in every trial. It comes from knowing that our sovereign God will work all things, including tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword together for our good, because we love him and are called according to his purpose. 
Romans 8, 28. Biblical peace is the inner contentment and freedom from crippling anxiety and fear that comes from being reconciled to God. And as much as it depends on us, being at peace with others. As we have seen it, it comes through taking every concern to God in thankful prayer. Being filled with God's joy and peace is the foundation or the platform that results in abounding in hope. When I got saved, when I received the Lord as my, as my, um, as my King, my Messiah, my Redeemer, I received the Lord as my Savior. I remember that I looked at myself one day in the mirror and I saw myself completely different. I had been so hard in, and, and it showed in my face. And the hardness of sin, the hardness of a lack of joy, and a lack of peace and once I received the Lord as my Savior I noticed that there was a softness in my face in my in the way I looked and I even looked younger I remember the first time that I felt peace and joy in my life I felt uncomfortable because I had felt so bad for so many years without knowing what was really wrong with me and wanting to anesthetize myself with drugs and alcohol because I felt bad and I was bad and it became my identity and I didn't know how to fix it and the more that I tried to do good I couldn't do good. And I remember the day that it was a strange feeling that I felt that I was experiencing. And I went to God and I said, Lord, what is this that I am experiencing? And the Lord said, this is joy. It is my joy. It is my peace. And I really had to I had to basically revel in it and sink myself into it because it was unknown to me and I couldn't stay on the sidelines of it. I had to dive into it in order to understand it and in order to really treasure it. We all want this kind of joy and peace that will abound in hope. But how do we attain this? I don't remember really what I did to experience, but the only thing I did was put God first in my life, spend time with God every morning, I would read the Bible every day. I would listen to the voice of God. God was the central theme of my life. And that is when I truly started feeling the joy and the peace that resulted in hope. And little by little, my depression started to lift but when it really lifted was when i truly deeply honestly and with all vulnerabilities i forgave and that's when all depression truly lifted and i remember that i would ask the lord lord I would say to the Lord, Lord, fill my cup to overflow until 
Father, it is just brimming and overflowing with you. Fill me to overflow that I will need no one, nothing, Father of this world, except you. Because all my life, I put my trust in people. I put my trust and therefore I was a people pleaser and people could turn me upside down if they wanted to because I had put my trust in people, in mortals that were as broken or more broken than I was and weren't even in the path of God and yet they had power over me and when I started to realize that and when I started to break the power of that in my life then it was joy and it was peace and it was hope and everything just turned to complete and utter freedom when I put my trust completely in God and took my eyes off of people and humanity, I found true freedom. The human means of this abundant hope is to keep believing in God and his word. And the divine means of this abundant hope is the power of the Holy Spirit. Begin each morning by spending time with God in his presence reading and meditating on his word, praying and singing and declaring the word of God in your life. There is a godly man of old days. His name was George Mueller and he knew this full well. He trusted in God to provide for over 2000 orphans at once through prayer alone. He was the owner of a, an orphanage and he used to make that first business of every day to have his soul delighted in God. And when you delight in God, my friends, you will always feel joy, peace, hope, and total freedom. Let us pray. My God, truly God, you are the God of our salvation and you are most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in you. My God, the hope of glory, you are truly our hope of peace, joy, and true freedom besides from you besides you or aside from you there is nothing that can truly fill our cup to overflow my father except we become beggars my god beggars of love beggars of attention beggars my father Fill our cup to overflow in joy and peace and hope and love and true freedom. I pray for each one of my subscribers. I pray the blessings of the riches of your glory to be upon them and their families. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. Amen. The goodness of God is all around us. And if you want to receive and to be able to enjoy the goodness of God and all that it entails, the blessings, the peace, the joy, I invite you to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. The goodness of God is available to you today. If you have not received Jesus,
Do not wait. Do it today. Do not wait to be perfect or rich. Do not wait to have a bigger house or a better job and have everything right in your life. Do it today, my friend. It is my honor to lead you in this prayer. And you might think that this is so simple. How can a simple prayer make something so important like receiving Jesus as my Lord and Savior? How can that be? Jesus made this process so easy and yet it is so powerful so follow me in this prayer father god thank you so much for jesus christ your son i believe that he died and he bled and that he resurrected on the third day i realize that i am a sinner and I ask you forgiveness for my sins. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Make something wonderful of my life as I promise to follow you from this day forward. Amen. My friend, if you've done that prayer, if you've said that prayer, there is a celebration in heaven as heaven celebrates with the repentance of every sinner. Congratulations. You are now part of the family of God.